This special issue of Social Policy and Society has been guest edited by three of us. Myself, that's Gary Craig, visiting professor at the U University of Newcastle upon Tyne. I'm white British ethnicity. Dr. Van Coley Cole, who's a reader in criminal justice at Sheffield Hallam University. He's black African. And Dr. Nazarene Ali, who's a reader in health studies at the University of Bedfordshire, and she is British Pakistani ethnicity. Well, taking a slightly frivolous attitude, you might say this has been three or four thousand years in the making. Um, the issue of racism has been around in society for as long as there has been slavery. When we think of slavery originally, we might think of the Greek and Roman empires. We might think of the growth of colonialism and imperialism from the 1500s onwards with Britain, France, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, Portugal and Spain, all creating empires built on slavery. In the UK context, we might think of the growth of racism since large scale immigration after the Second World War. And in the context of this particular special issue for the Social Policy Association, I think we can track back to a speech I gave to the National Conference uh, in 2007 called The Racist Tale Wags the Welfare Dog, in which I argued that not only was the British state racist, but that social policy as a discipline had done little to address the issue. Originally, the idea we were invited to um, construct a themed section within a general issue of the journal. This was the norm. But actually, we argued very strongly, and I'm pleased to say that the board uh, agreed with us that an issue like this deserved to have um, a special issue all to itself. And that's what we ended up with. And we were justified in pressing for this in terms of the response to our original call for papers, because we have many more than we could actually use, uh, many more than will be published uh, when the issue emerges in January 2022. Um, we wanted to have a balance within it. We wanted to look not only at social policy, but uh, cognate disciplines such as social work and sociology. We wanted to look at the experience of indigenous groups who have suffered racism for many, many hundreds of years. And we have two good articles, one about the experience of the Maori in New Zealand, Aotearoa, and one about the experience of the Romani, uh, particularly in Hungary, but in East European more generally. We have several theoretical pieces. We have several long discussions about how to do it or how a particular institute or department has approached the problem. We've got three shorter case studies, all of them interestingly from post-1992 universities, which talk in detail about the way they have addressed the problem of racism within their department. Um, and we also have a list, we hope, of helpful resources, statistics, um, places where people can find more information. We hope that, uh, and with the help of both of the board of SPS and also of Cambridge University Press, the publishers, that this will get a very wide readership. Um, it's interesting that what we're doing in the Social Policy Association very much lines up with the Royal Historical Society, which organises historians within academic life, the British Sociological Association, um, who does what it says on the can, um, and probably in other disciplines too that we're not aware of, um, where there seems to be a move on a number of fronts now to begin to say to people, racism is not just about race hate crime, something happening out there in the streets, people being violently attacked, 
it's not just about the casual racism expressed, for example, by people like David Walliams in his children's book, where he makes fun of a Chinese person whose name is Wong and conflates that with the notion that Wong is always wrong. And I'm glad to say the publishers have now withdrawn that particular book. There's a lot of casual racism about. But most of all, racism is about structures, policies, processes. So yes, individuals should read this and should be more prepared to challenge their colleagues and their managers for their behaviour and for things they say. But they should also begin to organise to address the structural racism represented by the policies and practices of the institution in which they work. It's these that lead to low numbers of BME people being accepted into universities, poor grades, high failure rates, poor employment prospects, and so on and so forth. It leads, for example, to the fact that there are only nine black professors uh, within the university higher education system, and that goes all the way down. Um, people need within the Social Policy Association to take this perhaps even more seriously than anybody else, because after all, social policy is supposed to be about equality and fairness and justice and citizenship and human rights. And if racism doesn't fit within that nexus of issues, then I don't know where it does fit. And yet we find from the work that we've done, from the research that we did, which led to the commissioning of this special issue, that most university social policy departments are still not concerned about the issue. Just one statistic, I think, tells the story. When we surveyed all the social policy departments in the country, 65 of them, after three reminders, only 16, that's less than a quarter, bothered to respond to the survey. Well, clearly there needs to be a lot of work on curriculum development. If you look at the social policy benchmark statement for the Quality Assurance Agency, the last one that was produced, there is barely a mention of the issue of race and ethnicity. Now, this is quite extraordinary since, as I said earlier, it's people from ethnic minorities who suffer disproportionately from the impacts of racism within social policy departments. We therefore need a lot more curriculum development work. The SPA perhaps it's already developed as an action plan and is beginning to put flesh on that particular skeleton. It perhaps needs working parties looking at particular forms of curriculum development. It needs people to read the case studies and the practice based contributions to this issue and think, yeah, we could do that. We can make a small start uh, by organising our teaching in such a way that these kinds of issues can be raised, can be addressed, can be dealt with in a safe and comfortable environment. There's an immense amount in the issue from the contributors which people can actually take back to their own institutions and use in a very positive uh, and safe and comfortable way. Yes, some of this is going to be very challenging. People have to challenge their own behaviour and their own ways of thinking. They have to challenge their managers. They have to challenge the senior management uh, and the councils and so on of the universities. Um, and this isn't just about tearing down statues or removing plaques. It's about everyday behaviour. It's about everyday curriculum development. It's about everyday practice for everybody. It's not just something which is, uh, in a sense, can be shunted off and said to the BME teachers, well, uh, if we're going to teach race, then that's that's yours. It's actually something that has to be done collaboratively uh, because, of course, working in collaboration with others gives people much more strength to be able to confront some very difficult issues. 